with Liberty Me. I'm Kyle Platt here with Dr. John Hunt, and he is the author of Surviving Obamacare, a new guide on a new Liberty Guide on Liberty Me. Uh, Dr. Hunt, it is such a pleasure to have you on. It's a great pleasure to be with you all and to be participating with Liberty Me. That's fantastic. We're we're so happy to have you involved and to have everyone involved. So let me know uh, what's your background. You are a doctor. Uh, why, why did you feel like it's necessary to write the Surv Surviving Obamacare Guide? Well, I think the more the word is spread that you don't have to participate in the ongoing process of expansion of bureaucratic medicine that's spearheaded by the government in general and just most recently under the eponym of Obamacare. Uh, the more we spread that word around, the more physicians are going to realize that there's another way and the more benefit the patients are going to be able to get. Um, and so I just want to participate in that spreading of the good word. Let's talk about the problem first. What is there to survive? What does Obamacare bring that is a negative for consumers? What does Obamacare bring that's a negative for healthcare providers? Well, I think we have to take a step back and figure out what was the problem in the first place that the uh, writers of Obamacare were determined to cure and did so poorly. Um, the real problem was the massive expansion in the costs of health care. And that is caused by something that the Obamacare writers completely missed. And I'm quite 100% convinced that the reason why health care is so expensive is because of moral hazard. Mm. And the moral hazard, it's kind of this, you know, it's kind of an academic term or an ivory tower type of term. But the nutshell is if somebody else is paying for what you decide for yourself, you're willing to spend their money a great deal. And as a result of moral hazard, there is no normal market mechanism for keeping costs under control. And that is probably 95% of the reason why healthcare is so darn expensive in this country, so ridiculously expensive. Hyperinflated would be a term. Mm. Um, and in, in, until you deal with moral hazard, the expenses are going to keep rising. And what Obamacare did was increase moral hazard. Exactly, the, they, they made exactly the wrong diagnosis and provided a contraindicated therapy to cure the problem by forcing and compelling health insurance, which is the cause of the moral hazard. Sure. So what, what problems do doctors face? You're, you're not the only one I've spoken to that looks at Obamacare and says, well, the system was terrible before, but now I don't even know if I can practice medicine anymore. To me, it's, a, it's an issue of morality, but I am kind of an idealist. Um, I see Obamacare as crony corporatist, corporatist, crony collectivist, or that big term fascist. Mm. And if you don't stand up against those entities, um, they tend to keep on building and growing, and all of a sudden bad, very bad things happen. I think it's bad enough that healthcare has been so adversely affected. So I think the, the main thing is get out of the system so that you don't support something immoral. But additionally, it's also just it's dehumanizing to work in a system where bureaucrats are making the calls, controlling the prices, top to bottom control of prices. And we all know that price controls are an insane thing to do to an economic system. And we have a healthcare system which is entirely price controlled. Uh, and we can get out of it. And I think that um, it's uh, Buckminster Fuller was the one who said, if you have a system, don't try to repair a broken system. Instead, build a new system and let it attract others to it. And a cash system is something that has been built before. It has worked well. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to do it. Sure. And then attract over the people. Sure. Uh, yeah. And, and we can get to the cash system. I think that's very important. That, that's one of the solutions that we have. But very quickly, let's continue with the problems. Uh, Obamacare was designed to help out individuals who could not afford health insurance. Uh, because let's be honest, this is an insurance issue. This isn't a health care issue. Um, it was designed to help people that could not afford insurance. And so the idea was to flood the market with people who had to buy insurance. And now everyone has insurance. And the prices have gone down for some people. I've heard... Um, I've heard uh, reports that they've gone up for some people, but why, why does the uh, 
the goal, the stated goal of Obamacare, why is that not successful? Um, again, I think it's, it's simply the wrong diagnosis. The lack of health insurance is not a problem. It's been told to us through a propaganda machine and a brainwashing machine that health, that people all should have health insurance. And that's simply bogus. People need health care. They need access to health care. The system that has been created since the World War II, essentially since the development of, of government intervention in the health care system, has caused health care expenses to rise drastically because of moral hazard. And people thus think they need health insurance in order to pay for the ridiculously high expenses that were caused by health insurance. Hmm. So that we have, to, we have to extract the virus from their brains that makes them think health insurance is a good thing. Help people realize health insurance is the bad thing that's causing the problem and provide for them an ability to access care that's inexpensive and affordable without health insurance or without the unnecessary type of third-party intrusive health insurance that we have been promoting as a, well, not we, but the government has been kind of thrusting upon us for the last few decades. Sure. So on to the title of the guide, Surviving Obamacare. How does one, as a consumer or a health care provider, survive Obamacare? What are some of the solutions? The main thing, I think, is to get your own health care dollars under your own control, uh, as much of them as you can. And one of the things that's actually a convenient Obamacare effect, completely unintended by the writers, is that for most people, health insurance has gotten a lot more expensive. Surely some people are getting it who couldn't get it before at any kind of affordable rate because it's subsidized. But the effect of the whole process net is that most people are going to be paying a lot more. And in order to be able to keep their insurance budget roughly the same, they're accepting a lot higher deductibles. Mm -hmm. So that all of a sudden there's, there's $5,000 deductibles. There's an acceptable deductible for people now. And companies are going to do the same thing. You can count on it that when they're compelled to join Obamacare, whether it's this fall or wherever it's postponed until, um, that they'll also insist on higher deductibles in order to keep their insurance premiums lower. And those those deductibles being high is going to prompt people to care about their expenses underneath those deductibles. And all of a sudden, there's going to be a whole lot of patients out there saying, I want a cheap doctor, or I want cheap labs, I want cheap radiology, because I don't want to spend $460 on a strep test in a monospot. I want to spend the $15 that it should cost, not the $460 that the stupid hospital is charging me. And that's, a, that's actually a a true number that my own university hospital charged me for my son's strep test and monospot. It, it, they're about a $16 test total. Sure. And, sure. and but 460 was the bill. It's, it's insanity. Um, and I wanted to make sure I don't pay that kind of thing. Right now, people are compelled to buy health insurance, not just by Obamacare, but because if you don't have the health insurance to negotiate your rates, you get charged by some hospital $460 for a $16 test. And the insurance company will, bat will battle that down on your behalf. And that's why most people probably need insurance today, is to deal with the fraudulent billing process that hospitals have adopted in order to combat the system that adversely affects them. Sure, but didn't they adopt those... Uh those processes because of the insurance company? It's like the perverse incentive that the, uh, the insurance company will pay it, so we will raise the prices to this level. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's really a silliness. The insurance company won't pay it. We know that. So we'll charge $460. They're only going to give us 25% of that at most. Um, but we better pick the price pretty high so that they give us at least a little bit of it. And then we can, um, the people who don't have insurance we can make them feel good by giving them 10% or 20% off of our ridiculously inflated prices. So, yeah, it is insurance that's the problem, but the hospitals take advantage of that problem. The facilities take advantage of the problem. The doctors take advantage of the problem. Because nobody is paying attention to their individual costs when they have health insurance, uh, the prices are completely not affected or controlled by any kind of market experience. Sure, sure. It's just a problem all around. You know, we talked about a cash system. 
Uh, I think this is a great idea. Uh, it seems very simple, but uh, you know, how does a cash system create lower prices for consumers, create a better practice for doctors? So it, the key elements is you, you have, the doctors can flush all their major expenses that they pay to deal with the insurance bureaucracy, the HIPAA bureaucracy, the Medicare, the Medicaid bureaucracy, including their back office people. There's often four or five or seven different people in the back whose job is to deal with the insurance companies and line up the codes correctly so that they maximize their billing. All those things can go away and get replaced with a credit card machine, um, a computer to process Bitcoin, a piggy jar to accept silver dollars and silver quarters from pre-1965, and even those paper currencies, the dollar and the euro and the like, flush all the stuff in the back and just have a cash economy. And the prices that the doctors could charge would go way, way down because of a lack of overhead, a lack of hassles, and an immediate turnaround time. Instead of waiting six months for the payment, you get it in 30 seconds. And by way down, I'm talking 10, 15, 20 percent of the kind of typical bills that go out there today. Right. I mean, I don't think people realize how much of their medical bills are built in with administrative costs to deal with the insurance companies. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. People do not realize it. And so on top of the moral hazard effect, which massively increases healthcare expenses, you have this massive bureaucracy and profit making that has to be fed so that they so so the insurance companies can build their massive buildings and have their big offices and accomplish no health care at all. Sure, sure, most definitely. Uh, any final thoughts before people go out and read Surviving Obamacare, the Liberty Guide on Liberty Me? Anything that you have to say about just the issue on the whole? Yeah, I, there are ways to take back your power. And that is something that I introduced in the guide. And I referred people to a lot of different websites and other resources that can expand their knowledge. The guide is, is short and brief, but sends them off in the right direction. A few hours spent learning about how you can take control away from the government, totally legally, put it back in your hands, save money, improve your own access to health care. It, the initial instructions are there in the guide, and all you have to do is care enough to do it. And if you're, um, you can do it for yourself, you can do it for your family, you can do it for your company if you're in, in charge of some organization within your company that controls health insurance issues. Um, and by doing so, you save money, you improve access to care for yourself and, your, and the people you care about, and you defy the crony corporate state that Obamacare has so massively expanded. So it's, it's good all around. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Hunt. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. I can't wait to read your guide, and uh, everyone else needs to go out and do the same. I love it. Thank you so much, and let's, let's go for liberty here. It's a great answer. All right, all right. Let's do this again soon. Okay, thanks very much. Kyle. All right, have a good day. <laughs>